Today in the workshop, we'll look at the custom boards I'm building for the DB1 robot project. We'll also go over the connections we need to make to get DB1 moving. We're under construction today, so welcome to the workshop. Well, hello and welcome to the workshop and welcome back to the DB1 project. I know we've had a large gap in the DB1 videos and I apologize for that, but that's a lot to do with summer, with some of the other projects I had going, with the fact that it was so darn hot down here in the workshop, it's not anymore. And also I have been designing a number of custom modules to go on to DB1 because what we are going to do right now is get DB1 moving and in order to do that we need to add a few more parts and modules. So what I'm going to do today is basically show you what we're going to be working on for the next several videos. I've started to design some custom modules. I'll show you what these are. I've been prototyping them and now I'm laying them out on perf boards. I know a lot of you have been asking about printed circuit boards for the project. I want you to keep in mind that this is still a prototype version and for that reason I am using perf boards. But of course we can always make printed circuit boards. In fact a number of people on the forum have already got together and designed a few printed circuit boards including for the power distribution and I think they're doing some wonderful work. I fully support that and I promise you eventually we will have printed circuit boards but for right now I'm using perf board. So before I show you some of these modules I want to talk a little bit about some of the posts we've had on the forum. We've had some excellent dialogue both on DB1 and other electronic projects and I wanted to talk a bit about some of the DB1 dialogue a lot of people have been asking, okay, is he going to be using RAWs? Is he not going to be using RAWs? Is he going to use this software or that software? I want to reiterate that at this particular moment anyway of DB1's evolution, DB1 is primarily a hardware project. It is a project to get enough hardware together so that we can run whatever software we want to to make an intelligent robot of our own design. Now I do indeed intend to be running RAWs on this robot, but that doesn't mean that you have to. You can design your own interface if you think that's a lot of overhead that you don't need because you just want to move a platform around the floor, then by all means design it differently. What I'm trying to do is provide a stable hardware base using standard components and standard interfaces that we can all grow on. And of course your robot, your DB1 or whatever you're calling your robot, doesn't have to be identical to this one. Now on the subject of other DB1s, I've gotten some great emails and some pictures from a lot of you who are building similar robots or ones that look suspiciously identical to this one and I'm really flattered about that so I promise you we're going to keep going with this project. There was a bit of a stall during the summer but it's back on. Another thing I want to talk about is GitHub. I have been putting the DroneBot Workshop code up onto GitHub. In fact you'll probably find about 80% of the code from the non-DB1 projects up there right now. The DB1 repositories are still private as of this recording but in the next few days I will be making one of them public. What I've decided to do is after a bunch of rearranging I've divided it into three repositories one for each of the main sections the base section the intelligence section and the environment or sensor section and of course the base section is what we're working on right now so I've been putting separate folders in for each one of the boards that we're working on because they all have their own schematics they all have their own code and and I have also created a wiki inside this section so that the entire project can come together and you can look for that in the next few days. I promise I will finally make that public because a lot of you have been asking for a long time. And again, I mentioned the forum, but the forum is a great place to dialogue and get ideas about DB1 because when it comes to writing the software on this, I'm going to be relying on input from a lot of you as well. Like right now, as I said, this is a hardware project. I'll be writing some basic 
basic software to get things working, but some of the more advanced software and some of the finer routines I'm sure can come from all of you. So once it's on GitHub, you can fork the project and write your own code for it as well. So I'm really looking forward to that. A lot of things we're going to be doing in the next few weeks and the next few months with DB1. So let's look right now at some of the modules that I've been creating for this little robot. So here are the circuit boards that I'm laying out right now. As I said, I'm doing these on perf board right now. Eventually, of course, we will create printed circuit boards. But the first one I'm doing is a replacement for the motor controller that we have right now. The current design uses a couple of Arduino Nanos, and this will use two ATmega 328s. Now this is um, missing a few components now, some capacitors and some resistors, and nothing here is soldered in. It's all this laid out on the board so I have to be rather careful with it but as you can see I've got the connectors at the back for the motors both for the speed control and for the rotary encoder inputs and this is the connector I'm going to be using right now to connect to the Arduino to the Arduino Mega and this will have uh, things like the uh, I2C connection from the Mega plus an emergency stop from the Mega as well and you'll notice I'm no longer using the DuPont connectors I'm going to be using JSTs for every Everything, and I'll discuss that in a few moments. Here's another JST connector, and this is the emergency stop coming in. You'll notice there's another chip over here. This is actually a series of OR gates, and I'm using it as part of the emergency stop system, and I'll explain that in more detail when I go over this board. This push button here, the red one, is going to actually let me initiate an emergency stop manually, and the red light indicates we're in emergency stop mode. The green LED will just be power and then I've got these two groups of push buttons and LEDs and there's one for each one of the processors one of the push buttons is just to reset the other one is just tied to one of the input pins on one of the processors it's just a general purpose thing so we can create test routines etc so I've got one for each one plus an LED tied to what the equivalent of pin 13 is on the AT Mega 328 and so if you're still using the old board you can easily adapt to what I'm doing over here but this is the layout that the new board will have now another board I'm working on is one that will distribute the signal if you remember I'm sending my I2C signals out and I'm amplifying them with a chip and on the other end they need to be converted back to regular I2C and distributed out to the sensors and so this is one of two boards this one is going to go on the back of the robot there'll be an identical one to go on the front I've left some space over here because I need to drill some holes. I'm going to be mounting those onto the front of the robot. I'm going to be using the Actobotics uh, spacers, not the little nylon ones because I think it's more secure. And in this case over here, I've got the chip that's going to do the decoding. The six pin input comes in over here. And I've got it essentially parallel to another output so I can expand upon this later on if I want to. I say essentially parallel because there's one pin, the emergency stop, that is different. That's what this chip is for. It's a similar gate to over here, and it lets me take all the emergency stops and combine them into one signal to send them back up this pin. Now these four connectors are for smart sensor boards, and I'll be showing you one of those in a moment. Uh, these boards just need a ground connection, both I2Cs, and an emergency stop output, so they got four pin connectors for those. I'm only going to be using two to start off with but I've allowed myself four for future expansion I've also put an I2C jack over here again for future expansion so I can add more I2C sensors a little power LED and not showing on here is I'm going to put a couple of straps and some resistors so I can do pull-up resistors for the I2C and strap them on and off as need be so this is a distribution board again I'll be making two of these and now I want to show you what I think is the ultimate wiring on perf board. If you don't think you can get a lot of components on perf board, well, I'm going, I'm going to prove you wrong. Now, here is a blank piece of perf board. I have to make four of these, so I've got more of these drilled out. These two holes over here are going to bolt this board onto the front and the back of the robot. These go in the corners, and this, believe it or not, is not soldered. These components are just held on, so I have to be rather careful with this 
but believe it or not this is it look how many components i've got here this is the dronebot workshop smart sensor the corner sensor and this is i think a work of art and this also explains what i've got going on over here which i'll show you in a second now this sensor will mount on the corner of the robot and as such there's going to be four of them two that look like this one and two more that are mirror images of this one and i'll show you on the robot where they're actually going to mount and as you can see they've got two ultrasonic sensors at 90 degree angles to one another and they've also got two of these collision sensors at 90 degree angles to one another and these sensors have a little pot on them so you can sort of adjust the distance at which they trigger it's also got a very large led that's a 10 millimeter rgb LED. It's very bright and so we'll end up having a light at all four corners of the robot that we can control. Now this is controlled again. It's based on an AT Mega 328. You can see the socket for it over here. Some of the support components. I have so many components here that some of them are actually mounted under this ultrasonic sensor. I've got spacers on under this. You can see a little reset switch. There's some straps there so I can set the I2C address of this. And there's also a connector over here. And what that that connector is for is for the FTDI. I can plug the FTDI into here so that I can still program on this. However, I don't necessarily need to start off programming on that and that's what I wanted to show you over here. What I've got here is a prototype of exactly this. I'll bring this back into the picture over here. This basically is this. I've got the LED and the uh, two ultrasonics and the two uh, collision sensors over here. And I've got it hooked up to a really nice little shield over here. This shield has a ZIF socket on it, a zero insertion force socket. So I can put my AT Mega 328 into here, work with it like it's a normal Arduino. And then when I'm finished, I just pull this down I can take the chip out very easily and then pop that onto the board over here or onto the board over there. So this is how I'll initially develop with the AT Mega 328s. And then on all of these boards, I've left myself sockets for FTDI adapters so that I can program them in the future. So basically, this is how I've set everything up. Now, one last thing. You may not be familiar with these sensors. I know you're quite familiar with the ultrasonic ones, but these are basic collision sensors. They're really easy to use. And so just let me move this out of the way and let me drag in a little demo I've got <clears throat> of these and I'll just hook this up to my power supply to my 5 volt supply and you can hear my logic probe going the collision sensors basically just respond to someone close to them so they're an on off type of a thing if you can see that very easy to work with. This little pot over here lets you sort of adjust the distance. And what these are going to do is they're going to fire interrupts up just to say, hey, something's getting really close to the robot. I think we should initiate an emergency stop. And so very easy to work with, very inexpensive little collision sensors. I think this is called an FC-51. So now that we've seen this, let's move over to the robot. There's a few things I want to show you over there. Most of the wiring that I'm working on on DB1 are connections to the Arduino Mega 2560, the main controller board on the base. I need to connect the Raspberry Pi, my motor control board, a number of sensors, and I'll also need to connect the driver board to control some servo motors. Now, the Raspberry Pi will be connected using the SPI bus, and there are two SPI buses on the Mega 2560. The motor control will connect with both I2C and an emergency stop signal that will be sent from the Mega 2560 to the motor control board. The sensors will also connect to I2C and they'll have an additional I.O. line that leads to the Mega 2560. Note that the sensors emergency stops go directly to the motor control board and not to the Mega 2560. And the servo driver is a PCA9685 module, and it will connect via I2C as well. So now let's take a look at the back of DB1 and some of the wiring that I've got to do. 
So here we are at the back of DB1, and this is the shield that is sitting over the Arduino Omega 2560. Now it's one of these prototyping shields like this, and you'll notice I've desoldered one of the connectors here. I'm probably going to desolder a few more, but I desoldered this one so that I could install this I2C connector. I'm going to be using these connectors for I2C. They're sort of the closest thing we have to a standard for the I2C bus. So as you can see, I've got my distribution board down. Down here and it's got a place for the four driver chips and we looked at that before and it's got an I2C output that's going to go over here to the Arduino Mega. It's also got a connection here that goes to the I.O. ports on the Mega and that's just going to go through these connectors here. Now I'm using JST connectors and I wanted to talk about that. I'm going to be using JSTs for just about every place where I would normally have used a DuPont connector. I like JST connectors better for two reasons. First of all, they lock in place and something like a robot which is subject to vibrations, I think that's an important thing. You'll notice in automotive applications they always use locking connectors. In fact, the connectors we're using for the power uh, on our robot actually have automotive applications. Another thing I like about JSTs is that they're keyed so that you can't put the cable in backwards. So those two factors are having me change pretty well everything over to JSTs. Now this second connector over here is the one that's going to go to the uh, new motor controller board, the one that I showed you I was laying out just a little bit earlier. There's also going to be another connector that needs to go to the Raspberry Pi. Now the Raspberry Pi is going to present its own problem. This is now a Raspberry Pi 4. I've replaced the Raspberry Pi 3 with a 4. Now this is just a 1 gigabyte one, but I have the 2 and the 4, and if necessary I'll upgrade it. I've got a nice little um, USB-C cable. This isn't being bent uh, improperly. This is actually a flexible cable meant for this sort of thing so it's a very nice short one to power up the pie but one thing is I'm going to need to connect to the GPIO and there's a couple of different ways to do that. What I need is the SPI connections and it's only a few pins so I could take a, a DuPont connector, I could use a double road one and make a connector cable that has that on one end, the female on one end and the other end would go over to a connector over here which uh, would no doubt be another JST connector. Another way I could do it would be with a little uh, pat like this. This. this is a proto hat and it's actually sized out for both the Raspberry Pi and the Pi Zero and what you would do is you would just put one of these connectors on the back of it over here and then you can place it onto here and you could uh, just install a connector onto here, another JST. That would look nice. The only problem with this particular one is that it is going to go over the heat sink and the connector for the display. Now. I don't anticipate using the display connector, although some of you who are just building a base unit might want to make a control panel with it. I'm not planning on using it. However, I've heard that the uh, temperature of the CPU on the Raspberry Pi 4 can get very excessive, and I might need to install a heat sink or even a heat sink and a fan, so this would get in the way. Now, I've got another smaller one here. This is a, called a Pico Hat Hacker from Pimeroni, and it just basically takes the 40 pin out and brings it out again and so you could use that as the end of a cable and just solder wires to it. You could even make it go in this way if you wanted to instead of this way which is the way it's supposed to go and you know free up the space around the top of the heat sink there so that's a consideration for the SPI. Now another consideration I had uh, with the Arduino over here and the uh, the shield on top is the way I was powering it. Now you know that right now this is what I'm doing. I'm taking this uh, short little USB cable and plugging it into a jack here and I really don't like it especially don't like it because it's going to drag down over here and down here is where I'm going to be putting that amazing corner sensor. Let me see if I can carefully grab that. And remember it's not soldered. So this is going to kind of block it. I don't like that. I've got another arrangement. The corner sensor will be going down something like this. And of course there'll be one in every corner. And I don't want that cable blocking it, although it actually doesn't really block it, it comes very close. So I soldered this up. And what I thought I would do is put a connector here, 
run it over to here to another two pin JST connector and use this arrangement same arrangement at the back but a small cable that goes up over here and I've got all of these connectors over here by the way because when I put the top of the robot on the shelf is going to block everything but these so I want to give them space and if I do that then I don't need this little USB connector here anymore and I can eliminate it and one thing I was thinking of putting in just because I can do it I don't have an actual purpose for it now but I may in the future is this little micro SD reader it uh, also takes one of the SPI buses but there are more than one SPI bus on the Mega so I should be able to use the reader and the connection to the Raspberry Pi simultaneously and that might come in handy if nothing else uh, than data logging or something like that that I'll do while I'm experimenting. So anyway, a few of the wiring considerations and the work that I'm doing right now on the DB1 robot. Okay, well that was a quick look at some of the things that I'll be working on on the DB1 project and some of the things that you'll be seeing very soon. Now obviously I've got a lot of wiring in my future. I've got some modules to wire up. I also have a number of cables to make and as these use JST connectors, I'm going to be doing a lot of crimping. I found my existing crimping tool did not work very good for JST connectors, so I've been doing a bit of research. I've run across a couple of tools that are supposed to be very good and I'm going to pick one of those up and start crimping some cables. Now as I create the modules I will create a video and an article and of course entries in the uh, DroneBot Workshop wiki that you'll be seeing very soon on GitHub and that will detail the details of the module, the schematics, the code, etc. So that's what we'll be covering in the next few episodes. So next time we get together we'll take a look at one of those modules. So until then please take care of yourselves and I hope to see you again very soon here in the DroneBot Workshop. So from DB1 and myself, goodbye for now.